Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Well, we've been at the medical centre, and it's not all good news. Um, first of all, I'm overweight enough to need to do something about it. That's not going to be fun. So, when you work all your life and you get to retirement, I thought everything was supposed to be nice and easy and relaxing. Well, it depends how long you want to last. Um, this has got to go, um, not all at once, and I went over what I eat, my diet and everything like that, and the, uh, the lady said, you've done very well making adjustments to your diet based on the fact that some of it was for health reasons and some of it was to try and lose weight, which hasn't worked. Um, and she said, there are some people in this world that just cannot lose weight very well by diet alone and you need to get some exercise in there. If you think about it, I do hardly any exercise. In, in the true sense, I do none. I'm on my feet a lot of the day and I move about quite a bit, but I don't exactly hurry. Nothing's at pace, it's all at a leisurely pace. Uh, uh, possibly got to change. Not yet. We haven't got to the bad bit yet. My cholesterol is wonderful. The level is five. Anything above five is worrying. Mine's just on three. So really nothing to worry about. But my blood pressure is too high and it's not as a consequence of cholesterol. Therefore it must be something else. And it's probably not my diet. It's to do with the amount of alcohol probably has an, a, an effect, and that also has an effect on being too heavy. Combination there, so the wine's got to be cut down even more, to an extent we might even be down to just one bottle a week with my two meals at the weekend. That will be difficult, but it's not impossible. It'll save a lot of money as well. <laughs> It's sometimes as much as a third of my food bill is wine. Um, that can change. Um, I mean, I packed in smoking, but I have smoked. Um, so, cholesterol good, overweight, lack of exercise. The other thing, the lady was impressed with my diet, but she said you need to double check everything that you've got that comes in a bo box or a packet. She said, which is, I'm not knocking it, she said, like, you know, you said you eat a lot of frozen fish, it comes in a box, turn the box over and look at how much salt is in there, because you need to get your salt down to next to nothing, because that's a major contributor, contributor, it's in there somewhere, my mouth won't work, it's because I can't have so much coffee either, no, that's not too bad, um, yeah, double check that there's virtually no salt going in because that has a major effect on blood pressure. That came out right that time. Um, I don't add salt to food, ever. The only salt that ever goes anywhere near any food is the water that I cook my boiled potatoes in. Um, well, that can just stop. My sister said, I don't know why you bother. You're going to pour the water down the sink. You can't taste it. Just try it and see, and I've, I've, I've never bothered, so we will stop putting salt in the potato water. Um, quite honestly, that's all I buy salt for, so I stop buying salt. That's not going to save much, is it? So I'm laughing and joking, but it's not funny, because when we get to the last bit, is it alright if I feel your pulse? And I'm a very good reader of faces, and the lady's face changed. I have an irregular pulse which would have an effect, possibly, on my blood pressure. In other words, my heart is having to work a bit harder to achieve its goals. So I've got to go and have an ECG and book that in for Friday. Um, you imagine when you get a, a thing like that told to you, you start imagining, well, what are we going to do about that then? And you start thinking, well, is that surgery? Have we got to have, uh, you know, what do you call it, <laughs> a battery, <laughs> battery operated heart. You know, you start going to the worst case scenarios. 
I'm not a medical person because I've never had problems. So, uh, but yeah, so that's a bit worrying. We have an irregular pulse, and the only logical reason for that is the ticker's not working properly, not as it should be. But it's a case of how bad is it? Does anything need to be done, and can anything be done? Bearing in mind my age. So we're going to have to worry about that, aren't we? So um, the only good news I came away with was my cholesterol's fine. Uh, I suppose we just have to uh, accept that when we get old, things change. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll check out salt levels in the things that come in packets and boxes. Um, as I said, she's just quite happy with the diet I've got. Um, what I will do though is, um, as far as the weight loss is concerned, one of the easiest ways to lose weight, um, it's not necessarily the healthiest op option, but it is a fast option for somebody who doesn't exercise much, and, and that's, that's go carnivore. So basically, meat, fish, eggs. <laughs> Cut out all the other cobblers and just eat that. So you're getting your protein and your fats and, and you know, and weight will fall off. I mean, my um, brother-in-law always used to say, oh, if you want to lose weight, cut out bread and dairy. Um, bread being the carbohydrates and, you know, and dairy. I mean, I don't have much dairy. Black coffee, cut milk out. So I don't have milk anymore. There's none in the house. Um, I changed my butter. My son said, I mean, he's a diet specialist um, you know he said if you're going to have butter dad if you must have butter then get the best there is and get proper butter with nothing else in it made from milk from grass-fed cows which is what I was doing but it's a high fat content it's not necessarily the best types of fat either so I changed that for a plant-based spread so that I can have something on my toast I have wholemeal bread so my toast is relatively healthy um, the marmalade's not healthy because it's practically pure sugar if you think about what marmalades and jams are made of. <laughs> uh, we have some on my toast. Um, anyway, a uh, few diet changes, a bit more fish and more eggs. So if I buy half a dozen eggs every time I do my shopping and have two three egg, three egg omelettes as my main meal. That's two main meals changed. No salt, yeah? And add vegetables in. I can put in, you know, things like some bits of cauliflower, bits of broccoli, some peas, some sweet corn, some green beans, and just put them in a container and make sure they're cooked through. And then drain them off get the omelette going and then add the vegetables in, fold it in half and I've got a nice healthy meal. So, and that's two meals a week then. And we're looking at, you know, <laughs> hopefully some weight loss involved. We shall see. But, uh, anyway, we, we might have to start doing some exercise, which here, I wouldn't do exercise, I, I'd just go for a walk, just go for a brick walk, brisk walk around the block or something when it's not raining, which it sounds like it's going to do now. <sighs> and, and that's something I don't really want to do. I, I, I find that a bit of a nuisance, but you know, we do what we have to do, I suppose. So I came away feeling a bit um, despondent, but. Uh, and it's really this business of an erratic pulse and what it might entail. But I shan't know. I mean, let's say, at the ECG, at which point a doctor will actually be present this time, not a nurse, as it was this time. Um, this health check is relatively light surface, you know, looking into the surface of your health. There's no digging into any in-depth stuff or anything. But... Um, there will be a doctor present at the ECG and the results will be discussed there and then, including what might need to be done, if anything. So Friday's going to be a good day, isn't it? We shall see. Anyway, I thought I'd let you know as soon as I knew and um, let's hope it all works out okay. Uh, remains to be seen, but it is a bit worrying. 
Um, it could explain why I get a bit short of breath now and again. It's the fact that my heart's not doing its job properly. You know, if you think if your pulse is erratic, there's only one reason that can be, is your heart's not beating on the regular basis and doing its job. But there could be something being masked there. The fact that I get a little bit out of breath more than I used to, um, there could be something else wrong. We're digging a hole here, aren't we? Anyway, we shall see. Uh, let's get the, uh, get the ECG done and uh, see what's said about that. And then we'll um, also have a look into uh, losing a bit of weight in one shape or form, form or another. Um, but, you know, when she said about, you know, we recommend 30 minutes of um, quite reasonable exercise each day for somebody your age, not too strenuous, don't strain your joints or anything, you know, don't go running up mountains or anything when you've done no exercise. Um, I said, well, you know, my son's a bit of a specialist in this field. He fixes broken people, you know, sports injuries, recovery from long illnesses, all that sort of stuff. He's, he, that's what he does. And he said, the one thing you don't do is exercise your way out of a problem when you haven't found out what the problem is yet. And that's my attitude at the moment. We don't start doing any exercise when we possibly got a dodgy ticker. I end up spread eagled on the pavement with, uh, you know, <laughs> with cats licking me face. No, so we won't be doing anything until you know, we've sorted out what, you know, what the problem is and what I ought to do. Um, don't go doing your own thing. So we won't be doing any exercise yet. We will be carrying on as normal with a few slight changes to the diet. I've just done one of the changes. My next home shop, I've just gone and taken the wine out. <laughs> well, I had a look. The wine rack's got six bottles of wine in. Now, there was a time when that was a week's worth. But that wasn't good. So we cut that right down to two or three bottles a week. It's still too much. You know, the recommending, recommended for a man is 14 units a week. And not all in one go. Um, but with at least half of the days, preferably four of the days, with no alcohol at all. Well, I do that. Um, but, you know, I'm still on two bottles a week, which 10 units a bottle is 20 units a week when it's not supposed to be more than 14. Well, you can't have half a bottle without paying about 40 quid for it because you pay more for half a bottle than you do for a whole bottle of the same stuff. So I'm not doing half bottles, which means I've either got to have one a week or two. And I think what I might do is alternate. So one week we'll have some wine with my Saturday and my Sunday meal, my two nice meals. And then the next week, possibly, we'll have two bottles and have something with my Friday meal and perhaps have some, a glass with some cheese or something at lunchtime. We shall see that we will make a few adjustments, um, but we're not going to start doing any form of exercise or anything till I get an authority to do so. And that's not me. I'm not an authority. It's all the flipping faff, but um, anyway... That's it, that's what I got today, and uh, we'll go from there. And I don't feel like doing anything out here. I mean, it's getting on in the afternoon now anyway, but um, yeah, <laughs> I could say I've lost interest out here today. That will come back tomorrow, it'll be all right. And um, as I say, I've got a little bit of staining to do, I've got to get them little feet done tomorrow. And they should get both coats on tomorrow, so the day after I should be able to have a look at the staging for the um, for the cymbidiums. We get this um, this bit of work type work done and get that out of the way, and then we can just get back to the plants basically. And um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. And well, see you for something tomorrow, as yet unknown. Bye for now.